Welcome back. I hope you had some fun writing your own R code. Um, and now we're ready to move on to the next big skill in this class, which has to do with RStudio. So as you were just writing code right now, uh, you were writing it in these small little exercise boxes that were built into the tutorials I asked you to work through. And I'm sure it's not surprising to you that this is not how people normally use R. When I sit down to write R code, I am not writing it in little tutorial boxes. And so in this class and in your future in R, you will almost certainly use RStudio, which is a product that is designed to make it easier to interact with your R code. So RStudio is what's called an IDE. And again, I admit, I had to look this up. We just say IDE. It stands for Integrated Developer Environment. You definitely do not have to memorize that. I have not. But what this means is that it's an, an application that makes it easier for you to write your R code, to test your R code, to keep track of everything that's going on in your project. So the way that I like to think of it is that R is like the engine, right? R is the language. R is doing the hard work. When you type in 2 plus 2, the thing that is calculating that to be 4 is R. R Studio is kind of like the dashboard. If I just handed you an engine, you couldn't drive down the street, right? You need the rest of the car in order to make the engine be useful. And so R Studio has all the bells and whistles that let you interact with that um, powerful R code in an easier way. So just a very brief history to give you some context. R Studio came out in 2011. It was released by a man named JJ Allaire, who is still the CFO, sorry, CEO, I believe, of the company. And now R Studio has a very big influence on R culture. And the main reason for that is in 2014, R Studio hired a man named Hadley Wickham probably the most famous R user today. And they hired him to be their chief data scientist. And this, uh, this hiring has now rolled into, in the last six years, I think they have around 20 full-time developers. So these are people whose only job is to write R code, and they are paid full-time by the private company of R Studio. And so if you've been paying attention to lecture so far, and I hope so because it's day one, you're probably thinking, wait a second, wait a second, R is open source, you just told me that no one can write and sell R code. And that's still true. So R Studio makes their money off of that IDE that we're about to learn how to use. They make their money off of the helper software, not off of R code. And so what's going on here is that R Studio is actually paying people to create code that R Studio cannot make money off of. And this is not unprecedented in the world of open source, but it is fairly rare. So what this means is RStudio is gambling on the fact that if better packages are released, if R continues to grow, continues to be promoted, that's going to, in the long run, help them out. And so now they have these 20 people who are just writing packages. We're going to learn about that set of packages soon. And those packages benefit you and me and every other R user for free. Now, a really cool thing happened this year. So this year, in January, RStudio became what's called a public benefit corporation. And this is really exciting because a lot of people are appreciative of the way that our studio um, has given back to the open source community and a lot of the outreach they do for education. But now that they're a public benefit corporation, they are legally obligated to continue doing those things. They've basically signed up to be held accountable to continue supporting education and continue paying people to develop open source uh, free software. So I admit that I personally think this is really cool. But I do want to take this moment to let you make your own opinion. I want you to think about this. Because what's happening here is you have this open source community, this open source language, created by and maintained by volunteers. And now you have a private company that has a lot of influence over the culture of that language. Now to me, this is a positive thing. To me, R is able to better grow because there is someone who is actually paying people for their time. They are paying the world-class developers to make more functionality in R. But many people are also concerned about this, and I think that's worth, worth thinking about, about what might happen if a private company um, has too much sway in the direction of the language. So I'll leave it to you to think about that situation as we learn this year. If you turn to the internet, there's plenty of arguing. You will find me sticking my nose in. So if you're interested in this, um, give it some thought. But regardless, you should know a little bit about our studio, both the company and the product, because we are going to use it in this class. So it looks roughly like this. I'm sorry, that picture went a little off the page, but you're gonna have a whole video to uh, go over all these sections. 
the basic gist of our studio is that it's segmenting your screen into helpful sections. So you're not only looking at your code and your code output, but you'll also be looking at things like what is going on with the files? What is going on with the packages? What is happening right now uh, that is influencing your R code? So you're gonna have a chance to try this and to learn a little more about it in a moment. I will leave you here to go try those out.